During an investigation, a police officer fires a bullet with a mass of 15 grams into a stationary wooden block with a mass of 5 kilograms. Now immediately when I read this, remember that yes, we see the question, but we're looking for information to answer the question. The bullet over here, 15 grams, I need to convert to kilograms, which is going to give me 15 times 10 to the power negative 3 kilograms for the bullet. They also tell me that the wooden block is not moving, which means that if the wooden block is not moving, the initial velocity for the wooden block is going to be 0 meters per second. My bullet will definitely have an initial velocity. So I'm just going to make to the right positive for this question. Then it also says the wooden block is suspended from a long strong cord, the bullet remains stuck in the block, and the block bullet system swings to a height of 15 centimeters above the equilibrium position as is shown here. So my equilibrium position, if I indicate it in another color, is going to be over here, which means this plane over here, indicated in red. Mm -hmm. And anything above that or below that will not be in equilibrium anymore. Effects of friction and the mass of the cord may be ignored. They tell us that so that we know that we can apply the law of conservation of uh, momentum here because it is a closed system. So what is the law of conservation of momentum? The total linear momentum in an isolated system remains constant. Now just to have a look at this. This is not really a linear movement. Can you see that? It's a swinging motion. So when we measure the momentum or the change in momentum, we are going to have to look at what happens either in the X or in the Y direction, linear mo uh, movement. So for this question, if they have given me this reference point, it means from this point upwards, the 15 centimeters is something that I need to take into account when I answer this question very carefully. I'm not going to look at the swinging motion. I'm going to look in the change from the reference point or my equilibrium position. Then it says use energy principles to show that the magnitude of the velocity of the block bullet system is 1,71 meters per second immediately after the bullet struck the block. Now, first thing here is when they tell you to use energy principles, it's important that you remember that we have various energy principles that we're going to look at from grade 10, 11 and also in grade 12. So from energy principles, the thing that should come to mind for you if you think about swinging in terms of a wooden block that was not moving and now is moving, we're thinking about mechanical energy. Closed system, mechanical energy will be conserved. It means that the mechanical energy here at the bottom is going to be equal to the mechanical energy here at the top. And with mechanical energy, remember we have two types, potential energy and kinetic energy. So if this is my reference point here where the red line is, do you agree that my potential energy at that point must be zero? The reason I say that is because we know that the formula for potential energy is mg times h, where h in this case will be equal to zero, and therefore because h is zero, I know my total potential energy must be zero at the bottom. My kinetic energy might be something else, but we'll look at that in a moment. If I say the mechanical energy at the top, is going to be equal to the mechanical energy at the bottom. I can go and expand on mechanical energy and say that kinetic energy at the top, EK top plus EP top is going to be equal to EK at the bottom. And I'm just going to write POT plus EP at the bottom. This is the bottom part, this is the top part. Okay, so EK at the top, when it swings to this position, what happens when it's at its highest point? Is it moving, yes or no? No. So EK at the top, which is a half mv squared, is going to be equal to zero. Happy with that? Plus m times g times h is going to be equal to and now for ek at the bottom remember that when we um, work with this the block was not moving the bullet entered and when the bullet enters the block starts to move 
So we are looking at this movement from the moment that the block and the bullet start to move as a system. Therefore, where the initial velocity of the block was zero, the initial velocity of the block and the bullet system will not be equal to zero. And that is our unknown here. Um, remember, we're trying to prove that the velocity was 1,71 meters per second. So this is going to be equal to a half times the mass times velocity squared plus and the EP at the bottom because we are at our lowest point, at our reference point, at our equilibrium point, H is zero and therefore this is going to be zero. Okay, let's pretend everybody's with me at the moment and then we're going to say this is going to be the mass. Now this is the mass of what? The bullet and the block. So it's going to be 5 plus 15 times 10 to the power negative 3, 5,015 times what is G? 9,8 times the height. And now the height is 15 centimeters, which is not in the correct unit. It has to be in meters. So this is going to be 15 divided by 100, 0, 0,15. It's going to be equal to a half times the mass which we've already calculated or which we can eliminate on both sides 5,015 times v squared and now we go and we use our calculators I want you to take your calculator and do it with me you should get 1,71 for velocity meters per second you get to that answer 1,71 meters per second Okay, let's look at the next part of this question. Calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the bullet just before it strikes the block. Okay, so what we looked at in our first part of the question, I'm going to just highlight this in green, is we looked at what happens when the bullet enters this block from that point onwards. Okay, so we said that our initial velocity is not equal to zero, we saw this bullet and block moving together as a system and when it gets to this point over here then we know that it reaches its velocity of zero and that's why it stops. What we're looking at now however is what happens before the bullet and the block become a system. We're looking at what happens to the bullet just before it strikes the block. Therefore we're going to use the initial velocity of the block as zero meters per second and we're going to use the information provided for the bullet to answer the rest of our question here. So if we're trying to calculate velocity for this question, I'm going to use uh, the conservation of linear momentum. And we're just going to move to the side a little bit so we have some more space. So we say that the sum of the initial momentum is going to be equal to the sum of the final momentum. Why can I use this now? It's in a straight line. So the first part of my motion over here, where the bullet is striking the block, we can use conservation of linear momentum because it is actually in a straight line. For the second part, where the block and the bullet move as a system, we have a swinging action and we cannot use the conservation of linear momentum. That's why we use mechanical energy. Okay, so let's go back to um, our formula. If we say that the sum of the initial momentum equals the sum of the final momentum, we can break it down into smaller parts. We can say the mass of the bullet, I'm going to use B as a subscript, times the velocity of the bullet initially, plus the mass of the block, and I'm going to call it a 5, so it's just a differentiation between the subscripts, times the velocity of the 5 kilogram block initially, equal to the mass of the bullet plus the 5 kilogram block times the final velocity because they move together as a unit. Do we have the final velocity? We do. It's 1,71. Okay, let's just go and substitute our values quickly. This is going to be 0, 0,015 times the velocity of the bullet initially unknown. Now, what was the velocity of my block initially? Zero. So this is just going to be anything times 0 equals 0. And then this is going to be 5,015, which we've already calculated, times the final velocity of 1,71, which we calculated in our previous question. And then we can go and calculate the velocity of the bullet. It should give you 571,71 
meters per second, which is super fast. I agree. That's over half a kilometer in a second. That sounds realistic for a bullet. Okay, and then the last part of the question. Calculate the magnitude of the force that the bullet exerts on the block if the impact of the force lasted for 0, 0,2 seconds. This immediately makes me think of impulse. F net times T is going to equal a change in my momentum. Or I can um, even just go and write this as F net equals the mass, Vf minus Vi, and I can divide this by the change in time. If we substitute our values here, remember we're looking at the bullet, so the mass is 0, 0,015. The final velocity we've just calculated as uh, 1,71. Remember that's when it's moving as a unit, minus the initial velocity of 571,71. And we divide that by the time given as 0, 0,2 seconds. And this force is going to equal 42,75 Newton. And it's a positive answer, which means it's to the right. Remember that force always needs a direction.